Is Wuthering Wave a good or a bad game? Well, it's time to find out. What is up guys, welcome back to the Bondro Gaming Channel and I am your host Bondro Gaming, professional casual Fallout 76 player and professional casual gamer. Today we'll be going over a review on Wuthering Wave. Now before you say, but Bondro, you never really covered gotcha game on your channel. Look, I went to the doctor the other day and he said I need more variety in my diet, okay? So Wuthering Wave caught my interest and I wanted to try it out. You may also be asking, why are you doing this so late? This was released a month ago. Well, I prefer to let the developers cook for a moment before giving my full review. As well, this review was supposed to come out earlier, however, I want to make sure I play the game before giving my full review. Instead of doing 3 hours and then making a review calling it a day without trying to understand the game. So yeah, I gave it a month. So what is Wuthering Wave? Wuthering Wave is a free to play open world RPG action game with gacha elements to it. Now if you've been living under a rock and don't know what gacha is, gacha is basically gambling but in video games. It's like opening crates in CSGO when you want to get a gun skin. However in gacha it's actually more useful as you can unlock more powerful characters that you can utilize in the game. In the recent banner I pulled Yin Lin, however she took everything from me and but I get dopamine by seeing her beauty. God, I want her but you now understand what gacha is. Good. Now before we start off this review, I want to clarify some things. I am practically new to gacha game. I am not a professional gacha player. The only gacha game I played before was Honkai Star Rail and practically I've been on and off in that game. I also never played Genshin Impact. There is a lot of other content creators that cover these type of content. This is more of an outside casual perspective so if you are new to these type of games and was interested in playing this. And this is the review that you possibly need. Lastly, in order to give my full review, I delve as deep in the game as, as I could before making this video. I beat the story, level up a lot of my characters, did some pulls for 5 stars, explore as much as I could, and fight as much bosses as, as I could before I get tossed like a salad. I did all that so I can give you guys a complete and honest review. So let's go ahead and go over the question, is Wuthering Wave a good or bad game? To sum this up, yes, this game is really good. It's amazing actually, however, it is not perfect. Now you may be asking, well why is it not perfect? Well then, let's go over that then. To start this review off, we need to start with the cons that I have with this game. Now surprisingly, I do not have much cons with this game. I really have like 3 issues with this game. The first issue I have with this game is the voice acting in the English dub. It's really feel off and poorly done. For example, Yang Yang's voice feels so slow. Now this isn't really a big issue for me. I actually did enjoy this game a lot with Japanese voice acting and the English subtitle like how I enjoyed my anime. This can be an issue with people who only play in English, however it was stated by the developers themselves that they are planning to fix the voice acting in English in the future update. So that is some good news for the English enjoyers. This story is actually really interesting however it just feels slow to me at the beginning. Eventually though the story does pick up in the later act. The story in the later act are actually very cool and very interesting and doesn't feel slow. It's just you need to get over this whole beginning act which in the end can possibly turn away players if they feel like the story is too boring to complete from the beginning part. The last issue I have with this game is starting it up. See there is time when I try to launch this game however it just doesn't launch at all. I'd be sitting there for like a few minutes waiting for the game to launch and it just doesn't. Even if I check to see if it's running in task manager and it doesn't show up. I try clicking on it again and it still doesn't work. I don't know why that happened. The only fix I can do is simply restart my PC and boot it up and it works after that. Not really a big issue I have with this game, but I can understand that this could be an issue with other players. However, I don't know if it's an epic game launcher issue. Yes, I used the epic game launcher and it might not be just the game itself. And then again, it's really just not a big issue to me. I don't have any issues with that at all. It's just one of the main complaints I have with this game. I tried my best to look for all the negative I could find, but I really couldn't find any more negative than this. Besides those issues, stability wise, I never face any lag or frame rates. The frame rates always remain the same or consistent. I never had to turn the graphic down. I have like a 3050 graphics card and I never really had to turn the graphics down or face any lag or frame rates. And I also never face any crashes. I do hear that a lot of people get crashes in this game, but I must be a lucky player because really I never face any crashes throughout my playthrough. That was basically every bad thing I could possibly find for this game. Again, I did throw it through, see if there's any other complaint I have with this game. 
really there is really no other complaint i have for this game most of the time the issue i have with this game it's skill issues for me because i suck at, at playing video games sometimes because i'm a casual gamer now it's time to go over the pros of this game and let's let you know there is a lot of pros to this game the first thing we're gonna go over is the music i did enjoy the soundtrack to this game most of the time i am rocking my head to the music as i really think all the music in this game is actually very good now the graphics to this game the graphics looks beautiful i think this game overall looks beautiful i enjoy how this game look and the graphics and the animation it's just amazing like take a look at this water right now and tell me i shouldn't drink it i actually do really enjoy the graphic and style of the game the characters looks great and the color of the biome is amazing watering wave is a very beautiful and stunning game to where i can play this game for hours see the same sceneries for hours and i will still think that this game looks very beautiful you can't say the graphic is bad in this game even though sometimes it may take longer a bit to load here and there but overall the game game looks beautiful especially the animation the combat you know all the graphics and the animation amazing it's very visually appealing and overall the graphics of this game amazing i like the graphics of this game combat overall in this game is very amazing you can attack with your character and switch them out for another character that's on your team which makes the combat very fast paced combat can be very mixed and different depending on how you select your team and how you equip them some characters use swords, some of them use fists, some of them use their guns, and some have summons. Every character has their own technique and special ability, so you can optimize one strong team, or if you want to change the pace of your combat, you can just simply change one of your characters for another, and things are different combat-wise. It is always very mixed, and it doesn't feel like you need to play the game the same. As well, this game is never easy. Combat never feel easy in this game. This game is actually quite challenging, which is why it's good. It is a fair and challenging game. There is times I'm getting tossed like a salad. However, I eventually lock in and learn how to get better at the game. Until I get tossed like a salad again. It is not hard on which is like a Dark Souls like game, but it isn't easy as well. Some of the boss fights are cool and interesting. Every boss fight feels unique and they have their own mechanics to each boss fight. Some of them can be annoying cause I have skill issue. But in the end though, I eventually come out on top in the boss fight after trying 20 times, making their defeat very rewarding cause eventually I triumph in the end. Which is why I think combat in this game is overall amazing. Echoes are a mechanic in this game. It's basically like catching Pokemon in this game. You kill the enemies and there's a chance the monsters become hologram in which you can collect them and add them to your collection of echoes. What is unique about echoes is that you could utilize them to give you the edge on in combat. Some echoes provide healing, some of them make you transform into echoes and do a lot of damage, some provide even defenses to your character. Echoes are actually interesting in the game and you can make your echo stronger by leveling them up. It is a good mechanic to learn and understand as it does help a lot in battles. It's not one of those useless gimmicks some games tend to do and it's just very overall interesting to understand. However, keep in mind that echoes do have a rarity to them so you have to grind out some specific monsters if you want to try to get a 5 star echo. There is a co-op mode to this game, however since I basically have no friends that play this game, I really can't test it out. However, I do like the fact it's in the game. Nice featuring Water Rave. Like I said before, the story to this game is actually good. You just need to go through the beginning which feels kind of slow. However, it does get good in the end. It does really pick up a lot and it actually is very good. I feel very compelled by the story and very interested to where when I beat the story, I wanted to see more, which is why it's good to have story to feel like I want more by the time it's done. So I do hope more story content is added to the game soon. I was planning to do a story quest soon, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. The world of this game never feels empty. There's always puzzles and enemies to kill. There's always boss fights around the corners and there's always challenges that you can go walk to. It just feels like this world is never empty. This world feels like it's very alive you can see patrollers attacking monsters you can just see monsters just idling by there's puzzles to solve side quests you can do boss fights in many parts of the map different biomes and that's what makes it very unique this map is big and actually is very amazing it doesn't feel empty like it usually does in, in most of fucking ubisoft open world games Puzzles are actually not really hard in this game. It makes you question and think a little bit, and some of them are really enjoyable. 
there has been some moments where I get stumped by a puzzle, but I, it's literally because my brain is the size of a peanut. Overall, puzzles are pretty good in this game and there's a lot of variety to them. There's no issues I have at all with puzzles. Endgame is actually very important to this type of game. What can you do once you beat in the story? Well, luckily for you, the game doesn't really end once the story is beaten. Like I said, there's many things to do. You want to try out other characters? Well, go ahead and try them out. You need to level them up? Well, go and grind the resources to level them up. Want a challenge? Well, you can go take on those holograms, which is designed to give you a challenge. Want better echoes? Well, lucky for you, the world is full with monsters that you can be that can be turned to echoes. There is always something to do at the end game, something to grind for. And then eventually it is updated and new content is added to the game, which is why the end game content doesn't feel like it's boring or that much repetitive. Lastly is this is the review of the developers. See, the so one of the main things I need to pay attention to these type of game is the live service aspect to this. Cause in the end, this game is considered live service. It is a game aiming to take your money at every corner. Does the developer do nothing to the game for a long time and just release a huge update after a terrible launch? Do the developer listen to its community and take their feedback and implement it into the game? Or do they just ignore the players and release a Nicki Minaj skin? These are questions that need to be paid attention to as I do consider them important when it comes to these type of games, especially if this game is going to remain free to play and have live service aspect to them. And the main reason why these type of questions is important to me is because one of my favorite games is literally a live service and haven't gotten updated in the past half year so yeah this is very important to me about the live service aspect to these type of games however the developers seem to get a pass on this they really do succeed a lot in the live service aspect from what i've seen and talked about from the most of the creators and comments in the community the developers tend to listen to its community from beta to release and the present day it seemed like the developers constantly listen to its community. From what I understand, the world of this game was more empty when it was in the beta. However, people gave them feedback and the world of this game improved after the feedback was given to them. The developers even listened to the players on criticizing the voice acting in the English dub, in which the developers have stated that they are planning to fix the, the English dub in future update. Overall, with the live service aspect to this game and the developers taking feedback from the community and always constantly co talking to the community and communicating with them, it obviously shows that these developers actually do care for this game succeeding and actually care for their community. They don't try their best to like leech off of them or anything. So I do feel like this community is in good hand by how kind generous and accepting to criticism where criticism is due. This game is in good hands with its current developers. So in overall, this game remained to be good, which is why I think Watering Wave is amazing. It's actually a 90% on the Bondo Gaming Review Skill. If those minor issues were resolved, then of course it can be higher. The game is not perfect, of course, but in the end, it's amazing. I do recommend if you are ever interested on playing these type of games, I do highly recommend on giving this game a shot. It's free to play, it doesn't really take that much space, so I really do think you guys should give this game a shot when you guys ever give a chance. I'm actually consider playing this game on future live stream, so if you guys want to see me play that, please consider hitting subscribe so you can be updated when I do live stream this game. But that is just my opinion, and I want to know your opinion as well. What do you think of this game? You think Wondering Wave is good or is it bad? What issue do you have in the game? What is your favorite moment from this game? Did you fall in love with Gil? Did you think Gen Z was cute? Let me know in the comment down below and while you're down there leave a like as well if you enjoyed this video Want to stay updated and when I do post a video on this channel or when I go live then please consider hitting the subscribe button as it does support the channel Anyways, I hope you guys have a good day Peace out